Hey guys, it's Chris. From battles that changed history to hordes of lost treasure found, here are nine amazing archaeological discoveries in Europe. Number 9. Ancient Roman Letters, England Midway through 2017, a thrilled group of archaeologists revealed the discovery of 25 tablets on the northern frontier of the Roman Empire. The wooden ink tablets, which are suspected to contain fascinating details about people's everyday lives, were found just south of Hadrian's Wall in northern England, at the Roman fort of Vindelon. Estimates by archaeologists date the documents sometime between 85 and 92 AD. Dr. Andrew Berkeley, CEO of the Vindolanda Trust and director of the site's excavation, referred to the discovery of 25 documents within a few meter space essentially as a hoard. The rare pieces of wood aren't much to look at at first. Roughly the size of modern-day postcards, they were preserved 10 feet below ground in damp earth. One of the tablets was easily readable to experts, who described it as a letter to a commanding officer from a soldier named Masculus requesting leave. Masculus had appeared several times before in the site's previously discovered tablets, which were found in 1992. In one, he requested beer from his commanding officer, stating, If you do not send me beer, I cannot answer for the men. You know, for some reason I think I'd get along with this guy. Number 8. Iron Age Battlefield, Alkenenj, Denmark the discovery of human remains was announced earlier this year by archaeologists working in the sprawling wetland of Alkenenj on the shore of Lake Maso on Denmark's Jutland Peninsula. Altogether, the remains consist of 2,095 bones and bone fragments, belonging to at least 82 different people. The bones are scattered across an area roughly 185 acres in size. All the people died in a single event in the early 1st century AD, and most were young men. All signs point towards the men having died in a battle. In addition to the human remains which showed unhealed trauma wounds, archaeologists also found weapons at the site. Turns out it was the remains of a battlefield from around 2,000 years ago. Based on the distribution of the remains that were excavated, scientists hypothesized that more than 380 people may have been buried in the site's boggy waters. The estimated size of armies in Iron Age Europe has increased significantly with the discovery of Alkenenge. Iron Age villages in the region had significantly smaller local populations, however, indicating an ability to recruit fighters from long distances, which required organization and leadership skills Germanic tribes were previously not thought to have. It seems odd for a battle to have occurred in a wetland, but many, if not most, of the remains bear gnaw marks from animals, which are consistent with having been exposed to the elements for anywhere from six months to a year before being submerged into wetland. Were they perhaps moved to the wetland from an original resting place? Researchers believe this might be the case. Archaeologists aren't sure what happened on the battlefield that day over 2,000 years ago. What they do know is that boys as young as 13 years old fought alongside grown men. Bodies were shredded to pieces by hungry animals, and the bones were later treated in bizarre ways that would be considered disrespectful according to the contemporary standards of many cultures. Number 7. Origins of the Bosque People For decades, anthropologists have been puzzled by the distinct language and genetic makeup of the Bosque People of northern Spain and southern France. Nestled in a mountainous corner of Atlantic Europe, the Bosque have unique customs and speak a language called Euskera, which is unlike any other spoken throughout the world. They're also genetically distinct from their French and Spanish neighbors. One theory held that the Bosque people descended from an unmixed pocket of indigenous hunters. How did scientists come to this particular conclusion? The genomes of eight Stone Age human skeletons from El Portalon in Atapuerca, northern Spain, were analyzed by Matthias Jacobson of Uppsala University in Sweden. The skeletons were anywhere from 3,500 to 5,500 years old, after southwestern Europe had transitioned to farming. According to the results, these Iberian farmers are the closest ancestors to modern-day Bosque. Farmers that came to Iberia during the Neolithic Age, or around 7,000 years ago, inbred with local hunter-gatherers. Descendants of the people who lived in Europe during the last Ice Age, the skeletons examined by Jacobson had more hunter-gatherer DNA than pioneer farmers from countries like Germany, Hungary, and Spain. The ancestors of the Bosque became isolated from surrounding groups after this initial farmer-hunter mix was established and were largely unaffected by genetic patterns elsewhere in Europe. 
which were shaped by subsequent migrations. They may therefore be the oldest ethnic group in Europe. That's kind of cool. Number 6. Mega Stonehenge just one mile from the world-famous site of Stonehenge in Wiltshire, England, lies an enormous row of 90 megalithic stones, which scientists speculate may have been anything from a solar temple to a burial ground. Discovered through the use of sophisticated radar equipment, the huge line of megalithic stone lines lies three feet underground. In September 2015, Professor Vince Gaffney of the University of Bradford and also the co-director of the Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes Project stated, We're looking at one of the largest stone monuments in Europe, and it has been under our noses for something like 4,000 years. It's truly remarkable. The discovery was considered the most exciting finding of Neolithic Britain for many years. According to the Irish Times, the giant monoliths are up to 15 feet tall and are thought to be 4,500 years in age. Located just under two miles from Stonehenge, the location of the monoliths is thought to be a Neolithic ritual site. Number 5. The Origins of Europe's Lost People the Picts, dubbed the Picti or Painted People by the Romans, were a confederation of tribes in northern Scotland. To this day, much of their culture remains shrouded in mystery. Even the Smithsonian has described them as Europe's lost people. A rare glimpse into Pictish culture has been offered by the discovery of an ancient stone anvil earlier this year, during an excavation on the small island of Rousse. Thought to be 1,500 years old, the anvil bears sooty hand and knee prints that have survived for centuries. In what appears to be an ancient coppersmith's workshop, two anvils were discovered, one of them being the artifact in question. Dr. Stephen Dockrell, co-founder of the excavation and senior lecturer in archaeology at the University of Bradford, said in a statement, The biggest surprise came when we lifted the larger stone anvil and cleaned it. We could see carbon imprints of the smith's knees and hands. The semi-subterranean workshop, which dates between the 6th and 9th centuries AD, is part of a settlement that is being swept away by the sea, meaning that time is of the essence when it comes to learning as much as possible about the site. According to the Swandro Orkney Coastal Archaeology Trust, the site contains several highly valuable ancient artifacts, including a 5,000-year-old Neolithic tomb. Pictish buildings, Iron Age roundhouses, a Viking settlement, and long haul, and a rare Roman coin dating back to the 4th century AD. The coin is an especially unique find because even at the height of the Roman Empire, the Romans did not occupy Orkney. Number 4. Long Lost Dark Age Kingdom Scotland Scotland has been a hotbed of activity for archaeological finds in recent years. In early 2017, a team of archaeologists and volunteers in southern Scotland announced the discovery of a long-lost early medieval kingdom. An important site from the 6th century kingdom of Reigd was unearthed during the excavation in Dumfries and Galloway. Until then, the actual location of the Reigd kingdom was shrouded in mystery. Experts only knew that it was known to encompass parts of southern Scotland and northern England. Important clues about the elusive kingdom are offered by excavations at the site, known as Trusty's Hill Fort. Rune and Tulis, who led the excavation for Guard Archaeology, told Fox News that the site holds lots of evidence of wealth and power. Included among the artifacts found at Trusty's Hill Fort are slingshots, pottery imported from western France, and crucibles and bowls containing traces of gold, silver, and bronze. According to Tulis, the crucibles and bowls were used for metalworking. The summit of the hill was fortified with a stone rampart and timber around 600 AD. Later, the fort's slopes were equipped with additional defenses and enclosures. Carvings in the bedrock that are unique to the region drew experts to the site. The carvings were influenced by the ancient Pictish culture of northern Scotland and were likely created by one of the Britons that lived in the region during the 6th century. The discoveries at Trusty's Hill Fort challenged the long-held assumptions by many historians that the ancient kingdom of Reigd was located near modern England's northern city of Carlisle. Experts began the excavations in 2012 and have since been working on the time-consuming process of piecing together its history. Number 3. Trellick, England-Wales Border The site of the medieval town of Trellick, which sits on the border between England and Wales, reveals a lot about one of history's most tumultuous periods. Joined by a team of volunteers, archaeology graduate Stuart Wilson began his voluntary search for the town in 2004 in Monmouthshire, southwest Wales. 
After years of hard work, which fell under the scrutiny of skeptical academic archaeologists, Wilson had discovered a moated manor house, ancillary buildings, a round stone tower, and a plethora of smaller finds, including 13th century pottery. As things currently stand, there's a lot more work to be done, but the town could prove to be one of the largest in medieval Wales. The plentiful finds, which include cooking vessels, decorated pottery, and metalwork, will help archaeologists determine the dates of the site and suggest that a large large settlement existed there. The town was founded as an industrial center by the de Clare family sometime during the 12th century and was destroyed in 1400 during the Orwen Glendur Rebellion. This is corroborated by the archaeological findings, which suggest a brief but intensive occupation between the 12th and 15th centuries. Settlements such as Trelloc were common sites for conflicts between rival Welsh princes and the English throne during a period of instability along the Welsh border. Trelloc is important because of its rarity and the quality of its preservation. Most large medieval settlements in Europe and Wales persist as modern-day towns and cities, making archaeological investigations of such sites difficult, costly, and only possible in a piecemeal fashion during periods of urban redevelopment. Number 2. Roman Treasure Trove, Scotland In 2014, one lucky Scottish teen with a metal detector hit pay dirt. A stunning hoard of ancient silver believed to have been used by ancient Romans as bribes. The lucky youth, a then 14-year-old named David Hall, discovered the silver fragments in Dercy, in the Scottish region of Fife. The trove went on show for the first time in October 2017 at the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh. On the day of Hall's find, over 200 silver fragments were collected. Later on, 200 more were discovered at the site. The fragments date from the late 3rd century AD and are called hack silver because they were converted into raw silver bullion after being hacked from larger objects. The site's location far beyond the northern frontier of the ancient Roman Empire makes the discovery particularly noteworthy. Evidence shows that although Scotland was outside the Roman Empire at the time of the burial, the Romans maintained an interest in the area namely through silver coins that were sent to Scotland as a form of bribery. As Romans attempted to maintain peace with tribes along their empire's borders, until Hall's find, the policy was thought to have ended in the early 3rd century. I bet you're wondering what was ultimately in it for David Hall, the young man who discovered the silver. Sorry to disappoint, but all I know is that he received an undisclosed fee. Number 1. Bronze Age Cemetery, Wales 2017 was indeed an eventful year for the announcement of archaeological discoveries in the UK. In June of that year, a Bronze Age cemetery was discovered by archaeologists on the Welsh island of Anglesey. The cemetery is believed to be from around 3,200 years ago sometime between the late Neolithic and early Bronze Ages. For at least three years prior to the announcement of its discovery, the site was worked on by experts from Manchester Metropolitan University, the University of Lancashire, and the Welsh Government's Historic Environment Service, known as CADU. Located near the cemetery is a late Neolithic passage tomb dating back 5,000 years, called Brine Selly Dew, or Mound in the Dark Grove. Archaeologists have also found man-made piles of stones, also known as cairns, near Byron Selidu, indicating the presence of yet another burial site. Ben Edwards, senior lecturer in archaeology and heritage at Manchester Metropolitan University, stated in an email to Fox News that the site had a significance that most likely contributed to its emergence as a cluster of burial monuments. Well, that does it, guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was certainly interesting. Be sure to subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.